Hello, my name is Justine Vosloo. I'm an associate professor at Ithaca College, and I am pleased to present to you our work on the job opportunities and compensation for mental performance work, uh, a comprehensive review from 2014 through 2019. I'd like to acknowledge the rest of the team, Sebastian Herrenberg, Alessandra Cortaroli, Chris Wagstaff, Natalie Durand-Bush, as well as our research assistant, Tara Stilwell, um, and that the project was funded by ASP through research grant funding. For those of you who've been in the field for a while, you know that there's been many conversations about the growth of the field, the career opportunities, and um, the overall health of the profession. Um, anecdotally, we've had multiple conversations and we've had reports that the field is growing and that there's, there has been a lot of job opportunities created, especially in the last decade or so. Um, we've seen anecdotal reports that the Major League Baseball and military uh, types of professions are, are really growing and that there's more opportunities for applied full-time applied work. Um, but much of this information has been anecdotal. Uh, this also occurs in the context of what has been published previously, which suggests that the viability of a career in full-time mental performance work is limited. Um, so all the way back from 2001 to as recently as 2020 with Martin's um, um, article this year that noted that um, his belief that sports psychology as a profession is an illusion um, due to uh, the perceived lack of demand of services and the lack of job opportunities in the field. This criticism is justified when we place in the context of the published works that have been published previously. For example, the last published review was, uh, was on job data from 1990, 1994 to 99 um, by Williams and Scherzer in 2003 and found that the vast majority of positions were actually in academia and that only 13% of those with master's level degrees were still working in a position related to their degree. When we contrast that with some of the changes we've seen recently in the field, for example, the changes in certification um, and just the number of, of CMPCs um, recently, we do see that there's been an increase in demand for certification. And then the question is, has there also been a subsequent increase in demand for positions uh, and job openings as a result? So our project consists of multiple phases um, and it's occurring in a 16 month time frame. Um, we are in currently engaging in a, a review of job posts uh, and web, uh, web search of professional titles, also engaging in employer and grad program surveys, as well as follow up interviews with professionals in full time, non academic mental performance settings. But the information I'm sharing with you today is coming from our quantitative survey. And this information was collected at the last ASP conference in Portland, Oregon. So if you attended the conference, you may have seen our booth uh, that Tara um, was working for us and there, there were iPads available for completing the survey. We also had a link in the conference app and there were multiple reminders throughout the conference, specifically at keynote addresses that asked um, attendees to complete the survey. There were also post-conference reminders uh, that were sent out through the ASP organization that were uh, either in emails or in social media dissemination. Um, and this was obviously targeting those who were already ASP members. We also engaged in snowball sampling uh, to try to reach non-ASP members. And this consisted of you know, asking individuals to forward the survey on to individuals that they knew were working in the field, but who were not ASP members. The survey was housed in Qualtrics and we had IRB approval um, for this project. The survey consisted of multiple categories of questions. There were demographics, information about their training background and professional development, so the types of training they had and their credentials that they held, and then their current profession and employment status was also inquired about. In particular, we're curious about their setting, their employment, um, the emphasis area of their position, uh, and the number of years they've, they were employed in this position as well as their income. In total, there were 74 questions on the survey. So 626 participants completed the survey, and you can see that the average age was in that mid-career category of around 38 years of age. Um, a, a pretty even split in terms of gender, um, and then in terms of race and ethnicity, we see that the findings here for our demographics um, replicate some previous studies in this area as well. And it's important to note that because we did engage in most of our recruitment through the ASP membership, this may not be fully reflective of the of all professionals actually working in the mental performance field. 
we inquired about the highest degree earned. Um, and here we can see that we did capture some students in training. Um, those who uh, reported the highest degree of a bachelor's degree consisted of 7% of the sample. Um, we did exclude these individuals of the analysis when discussing career um, settings um, and perceptions as well. But we do see an even split between master's and doctoral level um, um, highest degree earners. Uh, and then you can see the area of the highest degree consisted of sport, exercise, and performance psychology uh, at 63% of the sample. It's interesting to note how well spaced out and balanced the profession is. So we see here that the uh, group that was highest represented in the sample is 32% uh, and those individuals who have been in their field post studies in the five to 16 year range. Uh, but then it's pretty well balanced in other categories as well. We see that those who are still in the, the early stages of their training to, to advanced stages of their training um, consist of about you know, 20 something percent there. Um, and then we have those who are novices uh, at 25 percent and approximately 21 percent of those who have been in the field for 15 or more years. Uh, it's important to note that we did capture about a third of individuals in the sample um, as having no credentials. Um, so th this does suggest that we're still including a good number of early career professionals who might be working towards CMPC or licensure. Uh, and then 115 individuals did indicate having both clinical and counseling um, or, or clinical or counseling um, licensure as well as CMPC. And we can see this a little bit more clearly in the area of work. So we asked the question of that they hold the credential for the type of work they were doing and then if they were engaged in that work currently. And so we see that about 26% um, of the sample held legal credentials for clinical or counseling work, but then 31% were actually engaging in the work. So, and the gap here could be due to individuals who are in that early career stage who are working towards licensure, and so therefore are currently engaging in supervised work. Similarly, we had 63% report that they held credentials for mental performance consulting, um, and but more individuals engaged in mental performance consulting, which again suggests that there might be some folks here who are working towards certification, and that could be the reason for that discrepancy, but also individuals who might have um, other credentials who are also engaged in mental performance work, like licensure. Again, important to note that we did have some folks who had both licensure as well as certification here. Of course, of interest was where individuals were working. So what was their field of work? What was their setting that they were reporting? And as we can see here is just under a third of the sample reported um, being in full-time academic roles. One in five were employed in military settings, one in ten were in university-based athletic settings, and another eight percent or so were in K-12 uh, educational settings. 13% uh, reported being an independent, in independent practice. And then the remaining cluster there is about a quarter of the sample. And these included settings in, as, as diverse as professional and semi-professional athletics, Olympic, NGOs, club settings, corporate, medical, and university counseling settings. So um, a really wide um, snapshot of the types of positions that individuals reported uh, their employment settings as being. In terms of the years of position, what we see here is that we uh, see a lot of people who are new or early in the field, depending on the number of years in their position, suggesting that a lot of the employment settings reported here were recently entered into, especially when we consider the number of years of experience required. Um, so this suggests that um, you know, we are getting in that information that we were really interested in, which is the last five years, how have employment settings changed? Um, and we definitely have a lot to uh, explore and tease out here in our findings. We inquired about the percentage of applied work associated with their position. And uh, what we saw here is the average percentage was 46.6%, with standard deviation of 33% and a median of 45%. There is some variability here, and, and there is a question as to how, how individuals interpreted what we were inquiring about. So some of the variation could be explained by their interpretation of the question. Uh, gross annual income was just under 90,000 US and the median was 76,000. And the median is probably a slightly more accurate reflection of the gross annual income data. 
We also inquired about the average percentage of income from mental performance work. And what we see here is that a little bit more than half of all income was reported as coming from mental performance work with again, a wide standard deviation here uh, and the medium being 50%. We asked about the focus of the position as well. Um, and so the question was, does your current po position focus on mental performance work? And what we see here is that um, more than half of the sample reported that their position was either moderately or exclusively focused on mental performance consulting. So we broke it down a little bit further. We wanted to understand the types of practice that individuals engaged in and then the pay and the time spent in that work uh, a little bit more um, closely. So when we examine each profession and work setting more closely, we see that the time spent in applied work really varies uh, quite significantly uh, with the lowest percentage of time and income found in those with academic appointments. Uh, this makes a lot of sense in that these academic appointments are likely full time in and of themselves. And so any time spent in applied work might be on the side or outside of those full time roles uh, or as a service um, as part of those academic positions. Those reporting the highest percentage of, of time and mental performance work and pay are in professional and semi-professional settings at around 80% or higher. However, there's also some interesting variations here. For example, those in military settings are reporting that the majority of their pay is for mental performance work, uh, while slightly less than half their time is spent in applied work, suggesting that administrative or other tasks uh, take up a lot of their time as well. Um, and again, might also be a function of how the question was interpreted. Um, those in private practice report less than half of their time as from uh, mental performance work while spending 70, um, excuse me, half of their income as being from mental performance work while spending 78% of their time in applied work. So this again might be due to uh, applied work um, of, that included mental health or other services as well. Interestingly enough, um, when we asked about their job perceptions and their satisfaction with their positions, we had some, some interesting uh, information to work from here. Um, while there's been a lot of growth in these job opportunities just based on what we've collected so far, participants were split in their views of how ideal these current positions were for them with only 52% responding in the, in the affirmative. Um, and slightly less than half note that they feel fulfilled by their initial career goal suggesting that this might not be the position they see themselves in for the rest of their career. Conversely though, um, these individuals are feeling positive about their field. Um, and so when asked about their intention to leave sport and exercise uh, psychology or mental performance um, settings uh, and the field uh, more broadly in the next 12 months, only 22 respondents noted that they were likely or very likely to do so. While 440 responded that they were very unlikely to leave. So this suggests that while these positions may not be ideal, individuals are not interpreting that as um, a reflection of the field more broadly. So the results here suggest that full-time employment opportunities and mental performance um, has grown significantly over the, the last 20 years or so since the last comprehensive review. Um, and so this does fill a, fill a big gap in our knowledge about the profession and the health of the profession. In particular, mil military positions, um, professional, semi-professional positions have, have been added. And we do see that higher education athletics positions um, also have increased. So when we look at just military positions and higher education athletics positions, uh, together they represent about 27% of the total positions reported for the study compared to 29% for higher ed academic based positions. Um, so this is quite a significant shift from the last comprehensive review. This also does address some of the criticisms and also um, meet some of the recommendations by Martin um, placed in, the, in his 2020 publication, um, where again, he noted that perhaps there's not enough demand and there's also not enough full-time positions. Our findings here suggest that there are far more full-time positions uh, and opportunities that exist and that the demand of services have likely increased as a result. Um, uh, as, and the positions have increased in response to that demand. Um, 
practitioners overall are satisfied with the field and very few intend to leave. Um, and so again, this does address some of the criticisms by Martin that perhaps the field is more viable than we previously understood. Um, and with that being said, there's also some caveats to the information that we've gathered here. Um, since we did target mostly ASK members uh, and we included, we attempted to include non-members, but we likely were not uh, able to capture nearly as many uh, selection bias as possible. So some of the views of the field and the types of responses could have been biased as a result. Individuals who are intending to leave the field are probably not going to take a survey on job opportunities um, that were sent out by ASP. We did collect cross-sectional data um, and so to fully capture the growth of the field and the employment data, um, cross-sectional uh, approaches and methodologies are likely not going to fully uh, capture the entire picture here. And the self-report nature of the income data does have some limitations. As I mentioned, some individuals skipped that question uh, and there was a degree of currency conversion that was necessary for those who are non-US based um, practitioners. In terms of future directions, um, we recommend um, exploring the experiences of professionals in non-academic settings further. This is something that we are doing in our qualitative follow-up as well. Uh, understanding employers' perceptions and their intentions to hire mental performance practitioners would be helpful. In particular, understanding their view of the value of the CMPC credential uh, and those with dual credentials and qualifications like licensure and CMPC, um, and to also weigh that with those who are not certified um, as well. And then lastly, to fully understand um, those who are in non-mental performance settings, um, it might be useful to um, interview or survey those who have left the profession or left um, sports psych applied sports psychology and who might be working in more mental health or coaching fields to understand what led them to make that decision. Thank you very much for watching my presentation here. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, please stay safe and healthy and hopefully get to see you next year. Thank you.